How good is beautifully packaged food like we often see here in Taiwan if it might make you sick? Now, with a food self-sufficiency rate of just 30%, the country relies heavily on imports. So what is being done to make sure what comes in by sea or air is fit for consumption? Well, Xu Jin Chai from the Division of Food Safety at Taiwan's Food and Drug Administration tells us why they've bolstered inspections at the border over the past few years. Take a listen. We 必须强化这些冷链业者，它也是食品业者。那它整个的管理对食安的职能去强化。好，这个是在我们目前要更精进，是整合了从产、滞销这个整个供应链的整合在一起。Well, to understand how governments here and overseas are tackling food safety issues, we are joined by Martin Baknavich from. Uh, the Food Safety and Quality Penn at Penn State Extension, and also Dr. Ruben Wang from an associate professor at the Institute of Food Safety and Health at the National Taiwan University. Uh, Martin, in the US, the Food Safety Modernization Act was implemented in 2011, and I believe it gives the FDA a number of powers, including mandatory recall authority. Can you explain that and tell us what difference that has made for food safety? Sure. Yeah, the Food Safety Modernization Act has is, is done a lot, and certainly giving FDA some additional powers is one thing. But I think w one of the, the central points of this, especially when we're talking about the importation of food, because certainly the United States imports a lot of food, is the regulation puts the onus on the companies that are importing that product or the importer who's importing that product. And product that's made in the United States, it puts the impetus on the manufacturer of that food to make sure that they're meeting standards uh, for safe food. And so it's really hard to go through and inspect everything that comes in. You know, it's just difficult. But if, if somebody's responsible for that and the people that are responsible have to ensure the safety of that product, it's going to go a long way to ensuring that the product is going to be safe. Right. I want to bring up another point here uh, or another change that's happened in Taiwan. And this is very recently. Um, mm -hmm. The director general, a new director general, was appointed to lead Taiwan's Food and Drug Administration, which is pledging particularly to deal with food safety uh, and tackling those violations through collaboration and a, quote, whistleblower protection mechanism. Can you explain them what that is and why that's necessary? Well, I, I think Jiang Zigang, the new director in FDA, he has a very uh, unique uh, academic training backgrounds. He has backgrounds in to uh, toxicology, medicine, and food science. But the very unique one is he also holds a degree in law. So that is a pretty rare, rare mix. So I think uh, this gives him a very unique uh, perspective, allowing him to like approach food safety, not just from the scientific and regulatory angle, but also um, from a legal and ethical ones. So the whistleblower mechanism might be, uh, the protection mechanism might be his uh, work right now. And the importance, why this is important is that people who work inside in these um, factories are the first one to see um, the, those hidden problems, for example, like illegal additives and fake expiration dates or poor hygiene in food production. So I think if Taiwan really can enforce a stronger whistleblower protection mechanism, um, maybe more people could come forward and this might be a game changer in the food industry. 
I'd like now to take a look at whether tech can give us a bit of an assist. Now, Taiwan is starting to implement artificial intelligence to enhance food safety and traceability. Here, Xu Jin Chai again from the Division of Food Safety, who explains how they're doing it. Now, we currently the检验，那怎么去检验？所以我们就用一个AI辅助去预测风险。那找出它可能风险比较高的这些产品，去加强抽验。好，所以目前呢，整个中央地方机和做稽查的检验，包括从源头、后市场都有这样的一个合作机制。Martin, she says it's impossible to inspect every single batch that comes in or every single batch manufactured. So beyond databases, what is the U.S. and what are you looking at as far as technology helping inspection or detection? Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of that is just, I think, you know, from, from, a, from an, a surveillance perspective, you know, using technology to go through and, and track different types of issues that are occurring out in, in commerce. I think just having good good systems in place to, you know, for for the communication of of you know product that's being you know imported, different types of import alerts, and then we can go into and look at, you know, uh, databases to find what kind of issues have occurred, uh, depending on the type of company or the company that's producing specific products. So there's a lot of information that's out there, and but I think at the end of the day, it comes down to you know, to the people who are processing product, to the people who are handling product and, and uh, you know, even, even you know, distributing it to, to make sure that you have good, you know, good procedures in place, good policies in place for that. And, and Ruben, what about, what, what technologies are you looking at in particular? Because Taiwan is really not, uh, as far as storing food, it's a very difficult place with hot, the heat and humidity. But on top of that, we're seeing the effects of climate change. So can you tell us what we need to be thinking about? Yeah, of course, the, the, the heat and the humidity in Taiwan, of course, they can um, they they some some kind of create a very uh good in environment for the bacteria to grow and speaking of climate change maybe uh, a lot of people won't be familiar with this how does this climate change has anything to do with our like uh, food safety but here i would like to give you a a, a very uh, simple example and that is when we um, cultivate the corn that we know that they are all from those, uh, they are cultivated from places with less rain. And this is especially uh, like favorable for the harvest season because we need to get the humidity low enough in order to dry up the corns during the harvest season. However, when we are having this climate change, meaning that uh, those climates are not are unstable and unpredict unpredictable rainings may increase the um, the humidity of those crops. And when it comes to humidity, more bacteria will grow. And for example, especially in corn products, mycotoxins may exist. And mycotoxins pose a very uh, um, big issues right now because they. Um, are very similar to other toxins. They are stable and cannot be destroyed by heat. And people who consume these uh, toxins without awareness, may they may have uh, like long-term uh, health issues, especially for those people who already have uh, the immuno disease or hepatitis or liver disease. All very concerning. So, uh, Martin, you know, as we go into head into the summer and with the effects as we're seeing of, you know, changes in weather, weather patterns, what should we be thinking about at this point? Not only from the perspective of a consumer, but also uh, holistically as to how we approach food safety. 
Yeah, certainly, certainly changing weather weather patterns have a big impact, you know, on on how we handle products, and it's, so it's always important for those who are again who are involved in that supply chain to understand the conditions that they're experiencing, and making sure that they're being proactive in in their approach for handling and harvesting and preparing the different types of foods that they're they're handling. You know, taking what we call a HACCP based approach, right, where we can go through and evaluate the hazards that are there and then putting in controls that are necessary for ensuring safety are so important, uh, especially when we are challenged by different types of, you know, whether it's weather conditions or, or whatever, that, you know, we're, we're not getting behind the ball, right, staying in front of it, putting in things in place to prevent those types of issues. Right. And speaking of, uh, we're just about running out of time here, but speaking of staying ahead of the, the ball, ahead of what, what uh, the, the weather patterns that are coming up, um, Ruben, summer is coming up in Taiwan. It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. We're going to expect a lot of tourists, people eating out in night markets and exp- trying all kinds of different foods. What is your last piece of, of advice to those who want to enjoy the summer without having to have the consequences of not having enough food safety. Okay, uh, the summer season in Taiwan is of course hot and humid, and it's a perfect uh, condition for bacteria to grow. For for tourists, I think they have to stick on the vendors that um, cook the food uh, freshly, and they also have to be aware about the hand the hygiene of their hands, whether they uh, washed it before the meal. And also the most important ones to be aware of the water they drink. And the it, especially those, the source of the ice, because um, they they are all come from, um, if they are come from unknown sources, maybe some kind of bacteria like E. coli or traveler's diarrhea can happen for um, in this tourist. Right. Um, ice. Exactly. Something to think about, isn't it? We don't normally think about that and associate that. Just assume it's a good way to keep cool. But where is it coming from and what quality is it? Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, Dr. Ruben Wang, Associate Professor at the Institute of Food Safety and Health at National Taiwan University. And Martin Baknavich, Team Lead for Food Safety and Quality at Penn State Extension. in speaking to us from Pennsylvania in the United States. Thank you both so much for your time. So what's your biggest red flag when eating out? If you're watching on YouTube, share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you haven't seen our discussion on the recent food scandals in Taiwan, click the thumbnail to watch it now.